Hare Krishna. It's time for Krishna book. There's only so much time in a day or night. What are we using our time for? There's a popular saying, time is money. Some similarities there. You invest money to get a return, or you spend money to enjoy whatever it is. So time, similarly, you can invest it. You can invest time in Krishna consciousness and get a big return. Or you can spend it, time, expend time on something that doesn't last, that has some momentary appeal, temporary appeal, then it's gone and that time is gone too, just like with your money. Make a good investment, you have a good return. You don't invest it, you just spend it, it's gone. Time is so precious. And it goes very quickly. So it's time for Krishna book. Hare Krishna. Krishna 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 Krishna
I'll, I'll leave musical performances uh, to those devotees who are gifted and talented in that way. <laughs> Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Hey. Hello, Mr. Madhu. Krishna. Uh, stealing of the Boys and Calves by Brahma. Krishna Chaitanya. What is it about this Krishna book? It's so nice. It's so sweet. It's so delicious. What is it about this Krishna book? Hey, Madhu says, G Day. I guess that's God Day, right? <laughs> God Day. <laughs> huh. Okay. Uh, so, Agasura swallowed up all the boys, and then Krishna went in and got swallowed up too. And because of his effulgence, burnt Agasura from the inside. Agasura was a demon who took the shape of a big snake. And Agasura was liberated. It was interesting, the, the discussion of what happened to Agasura is that he says he's even greater than just, you know, a regular uh, everyday devotee, whatever that is. I guess not. Um, but that he was, in other words, he was very, very great personality. Why? Because Krishna actually entered into his body. The Supreme Personality of Godhead went inside his mouth and killed him from the inside out. Burnt him with his uh, Brahman effulgence. And then the soul that was inhabiting that Agasura body entered, in, everyone could see it, entered into Krishna like, a, like a, a form, a light, a piece of light entered into Krishna. Liberation. So then for one whole year, nobody talked about it because Krishna, oh no, Lord Brahma saw that, and he was astonished, because his realization of the personality of Godhead was a Vishnu form. That was his realization, was um, he was born from Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. That was, that's how he understood God, was Vishnu. Lying in the causal ocean, Vishnu. So when he saw this uh, in the form of a small child walking around and laughing and joking with his friends and killing big demons, and he wanted to test this out because his only um, understanding was Vishnu. So he took the opportunity of snatching away while the boys were in the forest, the cows and the boys that were playing with Krishna snatched them away and tucked them away in a hidden place. Krishna realized what Brahma had done. So what's he going to do? It's, get, it's getting late. They have to go home. The residents of Vrindavan will be frantic if there's no boys and the cows are gone, dog. Be the end of Vrindavan. Be the end of... <laughs> so he expanded himself personally as each of the individual calves, each of the individual boys with all their unique characteristics. Look at 
The boys and the calves were expansions of Krishna anyway, just a different type of expansion. So you need to expand it this way to fill the what was missing. And when they went home, the mothers, when they saw their boys, they had they said they had naturally more love for Krishna than their own sons, naturally, all they loved their children. But when they saw Krishna, you know, it was so they were experiencing those same emotions with their children now, which was interesting. Why were they loving their children just like they were Krishna? Because they were directly Krishna. And uh, the cows also had that same experience with their calves. I mean, so there we are. And Lord Krishna says um, he gave not only Yasoda the chance of feeding him, but this time he gave the chance of all the elderly gopis. He gave that same chance because they were children. They were five, six years old. They were still actually still breastfeeding. All the boys began to deal with their mothers as usual, and the mothers also, on the approach of evening, began to bathe their respective children, decorate them with tilak and ornaments, and give them necessary food after the day's labor. The cows also, who were away in the pasturing ground, returned in the evening and began to call their respective calves. The calves immediately came to their mothers, and the mothers began to lick the bodies of the calves. These relations between the cows and the gopis with their calves and boys, remained unchanged, although actually the original calves and boys were not there. Actually, the cow's affection for their calves and the elderly gopi's affection for the boys causelessly increased. Their affection increased naturally, even though the calves and boys were not their offspring. Although the cows and elderly gopis of Vrindavan had greater affection for Krishna than for their own offspring, after this incident, their affection for their offspring increased exactly as it did for Krishna. For one year continually, Krishna himself expanded as the calves and coward boys and was present in the pasturing ground. One day, when Krishna, along with Balaram, Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, okay, Hare Krishna. One day, when Krishna, along with Balaram, was maintaining the calves in the forest, they saw some cows grazing on top of Govardhan Hill. The cows could see down into the valley where the calves were being taken care of by the boys. Suddenly, on sighting their calves, the cows began to run towards them. They leaped downhill with joined front and rear legs. If you've ever seen cows running, it's quite a sight. They're so big and with the milk bag and everything. <laughs> it's quite a sight. The cows were so melted with affection for their calves that they did not care about the rough path from the top of Govardhan Hill down to the pasturing ground. <clears throat> they began to approach the calves with their milk bags full of milk, and they raised their tails upwards. When they were coming down the hill, their milk bags were pouring milk on the ground out of intense maternal affection for the calves, although they were not their own calves. They were Krishna. <laughs> These cows had their own calves, and the calves that were grazing beneath Govardhan Hill were larger. They were not expected to drink milk directly from the milk bag, but were satisfied with the grass. Yet all the cows came immediately, began to lick their bodies, and the calves also began to suck milk from the milk bags. There appeared to be a great bondage of affection between cows and calves. <clears throat> Thank you.
Uh, time to chant some more rounds. Hare Krishna. Krishna Chaitanya, Kabuna Chinanda, Shadwinka. All that you do, all that you offer, all that you eat, all that you give away, all the charities you perform, all sacrifices, whatever it is, whatever it is you do, do it for Krishna. And it's easy. You don't have to have a big elaborate setup, expensive this or expensive that. Well, if you have money, you know, you should use it. And do expensive this and expensive that. But if you don't, most of us don't. Krishna is not different from his name. So whatever you do, whatever you eat, what offer you give away, all austerities you perform, anything should be done for Krishna. It's very simple. It's not, I didn't say it was easy, but it's simple. <laughs> Jai, Hare Krishna.